as a man, if you were diagnosed with prostate cancer, it would scare you. And many times the option is offered to have surgery. And what happens is that there, it's turning out if you have a localized, slow-growing type of a prostate cancer, it's not going to kill you. And the surgeries can be pretty dangerous and, and cause things like incontinence and impotence. Okay. So it affects a person's quality of life. So this is something to really talk over with your doctor. Well, you can. And the problem is, is a lot of the time is if you know you've got some kind of cancer, whether you think it's going to kill you or not, you want to get that cancer out of your body, and so you want it out yesterday. Well, 3% of the men that have this type of prostate cancer die, and the other 97% don't, and they're treating all of them the same. Pretty so much. 97% of these men that wouldn't have died from the prostate cancer anyway are suffering with the urinary incontinence and the impotence as well as other complications. Exactly. Well, there was a study that was done on about 730 patients, and what they found after 10 years of following them is that about 5.8% of, of the people were dead at 10 years if they had the surgery, and about 8.4% uh, were, were dying if they didn't have the surgery. And that's a difference of 2.4% in this particular study. They found that 20% of the people had complications of surgery, and that many of them had uh, impotence, and they had also problems with uh, incontinence. Well, this also sounds a lot like DCIS in women that are diagnosed with breast cancer. Uh, indeed. In that situation, you know, it's the same thing. About 98 or 97 percent of people who have that are going to die with it, not from it. There's also the question of what, what we should be doing about cancers in general. And this may sound radical, but if you did autopsies on women who died from other causes at age 50, what you would find is 30 percent of them would have an invasive breast cancer, not just DCIS. And yet, 30 percent of women that are alive we don't find those breast cancers on the fact. We have no way of accurately diagnosing them most of the time. Another so thing, they're going away, is what this is pointing out, by themselves. It's a spontaneous remission. So we don't understand much about the natural history of cancers. If we did, then we'd have a better way to know whether or not the treatments are necessary. It's kind of hard for somebody, though, I think, to sit back and say, well, I'm just going to watch and wait, which That's is the why... That's Yeah, which is why. But the other thing is, too, is that I think it's interesting to note that most men at age 50 have 50% chance of prostate cancer. Right. 60, 60%, 70, 70%, right. and, and so, so on. on. That's right. And so it's not... Really, no, it's not a reason to really to panic and to think you're going to die from it because 90%, 97% of the men are not. What we need is a screening test that's accurate, that's going to predict who those 3% are. And we're saying that the current tests are not accurate, no, like the, the rectals PSA and the certain, PSA. Yeah. They're certainly not. And then there are expensive tests, like doing MRIs or with or without spectroscopy. They can cost as much as $6,000 to do. Can't do those on a regular basis, even though they're fairly accurate at following the progression of the disease. But there is a test called a 3D, 4D sonogram, which is a special kind of sonogram that's like a color Doppler that can tell you how extensive that cancer is that's there, and you can track it over time and see if it's growing. And that test, even then, is kind of expensive. You may spend as much as $800 for it today. And it's really hard to find that test. Yeah. I and mean, the only one we know about is in New York, so... A fellow named Robert Bard there, who's a radiologist, is doing those tests. And his patients are very satisfied with it because a lot of them are saying, okay, as long as I can track it, I'm okay with it. I can follow it. And, and if it starts doing what it shouldn't, what I don't want it to do, then we can start looking at surgery or radiation or some of the therapy. Well, I think one of the things to realize now, too, is that the medical organizations are not recommending that men be tested for prostate cancer any longer. Right. The United States Preventive Services Task Force is not recommending it. The Institute of Medicine is not recommending it. And here we are with a test that has so many false positives because 50% of men who have an elevated PSA don't have prostate cancer and about 25% who have prostate cancer have a normal PSA. So we're looking at a test that's not a good one, but it's, it, it alarms people. Even Thomas Stamey, the fellow who brought this into clinical practice in the late 80s, he says not to use it anymore. He says the PSA era is over, so we shouldn't be doing that. So what we're facing is our own inadequacies in, as physicians 
to be able to give good solid advice once you find these kind if you find that you have an early localized prostate cancer and again this is the importance of living a healthy lifestyle indeed and don't get cancer in the first place so is surgery the best treatment for localized prostate cancer I don't think so except in isolated cases watch and wait is good maybe we should be rethinking this whole subject and looking for tests that are less expensive, far less expensive, and can be done as a general screening test that's accurate.